Welcome back guys. Today we are doing a bag dump for an upcoming elk trip. It is a 14 day backcountry DIY public land elk hunt in uh, Colorado this upcoming September. I'll be spending anywhere from two to five days in the backcountry and then pulling out to the car, uh, regrouping, possibly moving. Uh, we want to stay pretty mobile. Uh, it'll be my dad and I. My dad's going to be there for support. He'll stay around the car and I'll be uh, hiking into the deeper parts. Um, but let's get this started. Uh, I won't be covering any of the consumable stuff today, so uh, any of the food. But um, uh, altogether, this pack weighs about 21 pounds. That's including, you know, sidearm. Uh, pretty light. Pretty happy with that. Um, it's obviously going to be heavier once we uh, put in the food and the water. But uh, let's kick things off. We'll start with the weapon. Um, this is new this year. Um, Matthews V331. Uh, 75 pound draw weight and 30.5 draw length. Really smooth shooting bow, uh, shooting 480 green arrows this year. When, uh, it's a little heavier than my normal whitetail setup, but uh, this thing's dialed for elk. I could go over that in another video if you'd like, but uh, that'd probably take a whole other video. <clears throat> so up next is the pack itself. This is an Exo Mountain K2 5500 pack. It's a little overkill in size for what we're going to be doing this trip. I caught, probably could have gotten away with a 4,000 or a 3,500, but I wanted one pack to do it all, uh, cover anything from a 10-day trip down to a day pack, and uh, if I could only buy one, this is the one I went with. Um, I am running a hip belt pouch on one side, and then on the other pouch, I'm running a Tier 1 concealed holster with a Glock 43X. Um, fairly light little gun. Uh, this is my concealed carry gun. Just like to have it along. It's totally optional, especially for Colorado. Um, there are chances of black bears and cougars, but um, it's mostly for uh, just peace of mind. Uh, oh yeah, inside I am running the Platypus 3 liter water bladder, and I do have the quick disconnect system on it, so I can use my water filter, put water straight into the pack. Next, let's get into the sleep system. Um, for sleeping bag, I've got the Kuyu Super Down uh, is the uh, 15 degree sleeping bag. Um, again, a lot of this gear took me about three years to acquire and put together. Uh, fairly expensive just to get into it for an elk hunt, so I tried to buy stuff I could buy once and then use it for any kind of trip. So. The 15 degrees, if I'm sleeping hot, I can just open it up. Um, but I can also go down into a, uh, a rifle season or something a little bit colder. So, Next item in the sleep system is the tent. Uh, running the Big Agnes Copper Spur UL1. It's a one person tent. Pretty small, pretty light. Um, I'm not comfortable enough to drop down to a bivy sack or just a tarp. I like to have the full enclosure, so I run the tent. And uh, yeah, this, this tent's been great for me. I've used it several times. Really like it. For sleeping pad, I've got the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. I feel like a lot of people run these. I don't have experience with any other pads. Bought this one and just really like it. Don't feel the need to upgrade. Along with that, uh, I do have kind of a creature comfort item. That is the Thermarest Z Seat. This, I just, I can stand on it when I change my boots, use it as a, a mat for the, the camp, and uh, sit on it while I'm cooking breakfast or glassing, something like that. Um, really nice to have along. It doesn't weigh that much, but it is a completely optional uh, creature comfort type item. So, getting into the pillow, I do not run a designated pillow. This is a Thermarest pillow cover, and I keep my puffy jacket and... Um, a spare item of clothing in this, and that's what I use as a pillow. It saves me some weight. I don't, I don't really need a pillow. It'd be nice to have, but um, yeah, just choose to run this route. I keep a spare pair of socks in there, and what I'm using for socks are the Darn Tough Vermont uh, boot sock. They're the Hunt version. Um, just got them on Go Hunt. Really like these socks. Like all the Darn Tough socks. Uh, the Merino. They're pretty. They breathe pretty well for the amount of cushion they have. And I do like to have a spare pair of socks. I trade them out every other day, and once I trade them out, I won't be putting them back in the pillow. 
So along with the socks, I also keep um, an extra shirt. I like to run a long sleeve shirt as backup in case I get, uh, get sunburnt uh, or the bugs are bad. I like to have a, a different option just to change into, get out of a wet shirt at the end of a long hunt. Um, and then for insulation, I have the First Light Uncompagre 2.0 jacket. Pretty light, um, extreme, extreme warmth. Uh, for me, uh, this, this is all I really need. Um, sometimes in Colorado on those early season hunts, it can drop down to um, below 30. Uh, last year, around that time, they actually got a bunch of snow um, when we were out there, they're scouting. So that's what I run for a puffy. And it works great as a pillow as well. Moving into what I'm gonna be wearing on the hunt, um, we'll start with the boots. These are the Crispy Nevadas. Um, these are new boots for this year. I've been trying them out. Man, they feel already broken in. I put about three or four miles on them. Great boots. They are a little bit hotter than what I'm used to uh, since they're, they're full grain leather. But uh, super, super pliable, great flex to them. Um, and I don't, don't see running into any problems. I will have a backup pair of boots for the steeper stuff in case I uh, really need to pack a bowl down some down some steep terrain. Uh, these are a little bit weaker flex than I'd prefer for very steep stuff, but love these boots, super comfortable. And that's that's the main main idea going into the hunt is pick something that's gonna be comfortable. I don't get blisters and I can uh, hunt without thinking about my feet. I don't like to run hooded um, base layers, so I have a first light uh, merino gaiter just to keep my neck out of the sun and I can pull it up over my face if I want to as well for a little bit of extra camo. As for the shirt itself, this is a First Light Arrow Wool Wick short sleeve. And for pants, um, I'm using the Obsidian Foundry Pants, also from First Light. Uh, really like the suspenders, don't have to wear a belt. And as a backup, I usually take um, a pair or two of the Prana Men's Zion Stretch Pant. That's what I've traditionally worn. I really like the Piranhas, but trying out the Merino bottoms this year from First Light. Into the cook system, um, in just a Sea to Summit dry bag, I'll be using the MSR Wind Burner. Um, very comparable to a Jet Boil. But I really like the, the Wind Burner. It's all you know, encapsulated in one, one package. I've got my lighter in there since it doesn't have um, ignition, but I prefer that in case the ignition might break. But um, really like the MSR wind burner. And along with that, I've got the um, a Sea to Summit titanium spoon. Got to go long handle. Next, just a Rocky Mountain uh, Hunting Calls Bully Bull Bugle Tube. And I will be taking a rain jacket. This is the Kuyu Chigach NX rain jacket. Um, I don't run rain pants. I'll have those in the car. If the weather forecast calls for a bunch of rain, I'll take the rain pants, but a lot of the times I find that just the hunting, just the rain jacket itself is uh, enough for the pop-up showers that uh, Colorado's famous for in the afternoons. Moving to the water setup, the water filter. I like to use the Sawyer Squeeze. Um, I tried the Mini, I didn't like it very much. Uh, the Squeeze seems to be everything I need and it's fairly affordable. Um, pretty affordable, it's like 30 bucks at Walmart. Um, I always keep an extra one back at the truck in case this were to freeze somehow. Um, along with that, I have the Sawyer pouch that comes with it. I haven't had any bad experiences with this, but I've heard some people uh, have blowouts, they break on them. So, um, as a backup, I have a platypus 2 liter dirty bag. Um, weighs nothing, it's good. Good reassurance for backup in case something does happen to that, you gotta have water. Moving on to optics. Uh, this is my bino harness. This is the Kuyu Pro Bino Harness. Um, love, this, love this harness. I've tried the regular Kuyu binocular harness. Uh, not the Pro, and didn't like it at all. Um, the chest straps attached to the binoculars instead of the, the pack, and the pack was always dropping down when I was glassing. Um, switched to the Pro, uh, nothing but good things to say. Really like this one. 
silent, easy to use with one hand. Um, inside, I've got the Vortex Viper. These are the 10 by 50 HDs. Nice, great optics for the price. Um, couldn't shell out the couple grand for the Swarovskis. Um, in this, I have some wind checker on one side. The other side has just a small rain fly for the for the binocular harness. Um, in case I want to keep it dry, it doesn't weigh much. Great to have along. Um, I did put the one of the Kuyu pouches on the bottom. It attaches really nicely, and that's where I keep my uh, mouth calls. These are more um, Rocky Mountain elk calls. And I also keep a Vortex lens pen. Doesn't weigh much. I can uh, brush dirt out of the optics. This is great to have along. I also do have an attached lens cloth uh, made by Kuyu. Haven't had too much use for this. The lens pen seems to take care of it, but I just like having it along for glasses, something like that. On the side, I've got the Kuyu rangefinder pouch and lanyard. Really like running the lanyard on this. Um, in case I have to drop this quick to make a shot or forget or this falls out, I know I'm not going to lose my rangefinder. That's vital for an archery hunt. Um, and inside, this is the Leupold RX 1600i rangefinder. No complaints on that. Really like it. And that concludes the binocular harness. So up next are two kind of miscellaneous items. One is a headlamp, in my opinion, very necessary. This is the Petzl Actic. Um, this is an upgrade from the Black Diamond Spot headlamp, and I really like the Spot. This just offers a little bit more lumens in one mode, um, so I can use it for blood tracking a little bit better, but really comparable. Um, both are great. This is just a little bit more expensive. And I will have the Spot back in the truck as a backup. The second mis miscellaneous item is the Garmin InReach Mini. It's uh, running this new for this year. I um, want to be able to talk and communicate with my dad back at camp in case I get a bull down, need to get picked up, and uh, it's always just a great peace of mind being able to hit that, um, that SOS button in case something does go sour, but yeah, cool little piece of equipment. So next up is the Kill Kit. We'll dive into this. First off, we have the Kuyu large quarter bags. These are meant for bone-in meat. Um, not a big fan of boning out if I don't have to. Um, I do pack five of these, which could be overkill, but I like to have one for each quarter, and then uh, a fifth one for the back straps, neck meat, all the all the extra stuff. Um, I like to once an elk gets down, I hope to put it in the bags and be able to hang it so it starts to cool down right away. So along with the game bags, we've got um, a knife. Uh, I was pretty torn, uh, big knife guy, so I uh, love fixed blades. Um, I've got two different um, replaceable blade knives. I've got the Outdoor Edge and the Prana, um, uh, excuse me, the Havilon Peranta. And uh, just not a big fan of the replaceable blade knives. Um, I don't really know what to do with the blades after you switch them out. You either put them back in the, uh, the plastic or some people like to bury them in, in the ground. And I, I don't like the idea of that. Also, they're a little bit less durable. So um, I really like this uh, Benchmade Steep Country. Perfect little knife, very lightweight, very sharp. Holds its edge pretty well. Um, big fan of that. And I always carry a backup pocket knife so that'll be along with me. This is the Benchmade Bug Out. Um, very light. Like Always like to have a backup blade and um, as you can tell I, I do like Benchmades. So since I'm not using a replaceable blade knife I've got the WorkSharp 2.0 Guide Field Sharpener. Um, this does weigh a little bit but um, really find it handy being able to sharpen the knife in the field and get back to clean the game. Also have some paracord, nice to have some rope so I can hang some quarters, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and a little bit of trail marking tape, never used it but it doesn't weigh much and I like the idea of having it along. Have some nitrile gloves and lastly just a cheap like 99 cent survival blanket. Um, I like to have these along so I can lay them out and I can put some meat on it, keep it off the ground, get dirty, weighs almost nothing. 
Just nice to have along. Definitely not necessary. Next is kind of the emergency kit, that's what I like to call it. In here, I keep a uh, spare release. I think that's super important if I drop my release um, somewhere along the way and you can't shoot. Uh, I don't want to have to pack all the way out back to the truck or if I leave the release at the truck, something like that. But always really like to have a spare release because I have had things happen like, uh, like the trigger falling off, things like that. Good to have. I carry along two extra trash bags. These could be, these are very multi-purpose. I can cover my pack with it um, if it's raining and I really need to get it out of the rain or if it's sitting out overnight. Um, I can't quite fit it in my tent. So if, it, if it's raining, definitely want to protect that, protect that bag. Um, could also put uh, meat in if, it, if you had to. Just a lot of uses for that and they're, they're super lightweight. Um, I like to carry along some Luco tape. This is for blister prevention. Um, yeah, if you, if your feet aren't comfortable, uh, it makes hunting really miserable. So I like to carry some of that. It doesn't weigh too much. Just have some gauze, um, not too much. Got a patch kit for the Thermorest, uh, sleeping pad in case that gets punctured. Doesn't weigh much. Keep along a set of Allen wrenches. This is a little bit heavier, but being able to Tighten some bolts, make some tweaks on the fly in case something gets bumped when you're you're dragging around in the woods. That's invaluable. Have a little bit of antibacterial ointment, prevent infection. This is just Neosporin. Couple of assorted band-aids. Um, an extra lighter, just a small one, so I could start a fire or in case something happens to my stove lighter. And then um, also carry a very small tube of super glue. This is the Gorilla Glue Mini. Doesn't weigh much at all. It's under an ounce. Um, yeah, so if I had to super glue something back on my bow, make a really hacky field repair, or even uh, kind of super glue together a cut, got a long, that can be very helpful. Lastly, I carry a, um, a broadhead wrench. I've slipped before putting them on with my hand and really sliced myself open, and I do not want that, that to happen in the backcountry. That just Having this is a good peace of mind and uh, it doesn't weigh much at all. And that concludes the emergency kit. Alright, and lastly we've got kind of the personals. Um, carry some dude wipes. When you're sweating, hiking around in the woods, sometimes toilet paper just doesn't cut it. Really like having those along. Um, toothbrush, cut in half. Doesn't save that much weight, but just like doing it. Saline, I do wear contacts. Um, to go with that, I've got a contact case. Contacts really suck, but it's kind of what I like to deal with. Chapstick, super important. Got a backup headlamp. This is the Petzl E Plus Light. Super lightweight, um, rudimentary backup system in case my other light fails and I need to get back to camp, get back to the truck, or follow a blood trail. Super nice to have. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, features I really like to have on headlamps is a lock feature so it doesn't get bumped on your pack. Um, it's always going to be working when you need it. Um, so both of these Petzls have the lockout feature. And lastly, some toothpaste. Alright, so that covers the bag dump. Um, leave a comment below if you guys think I left anything out. If you run something different, I always like to hear back from you guys. Um, like I said, total weight on this is around 21 pounds. That includes the sidearm, the Glock G43X, and the holster, and doesn't include any of the water or food. And the food should run about a little over a pound a day. So fairly lightweight. There's several things I could skimp on and, and get rid of to make things lighter, but uh, I think this is what I'm running. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.